evening and welcome to Maple Grove Lutheran Church. Wednesday evening worship in Lent for our Holden evening prayer service. This is our final Wednesday in Lent. And um, so we thank Mark Brown and his son Tristan Brown uh, to provide the music tonight. We are here online only tonight, but on Palm Sunday we reopen. And so we invite you to come Palm Sunday in person. Of course, we'll always be online also, uh, but we've got lots of palms for um, adults, families, and children, and we will um, celebrate with a children's procession, and um, we look forward to um, Palm Sunday. Pastor Gordon Bratz is our guest preacher. Our hearts are full as we say thank you for your giving during the season of Lent, not only to Back to Basics, and you can continue to do that right up to Palm Sunday, but also for your financial gifts. This Sunday, we're gonna hear an update from Jean Orman and Mike Dorsey. Meantime, please continue your regular Lenten giving, and uh, you know, as we keep showing the gratitude that we have to God for all the ways he blesses us, you know, your giving strengthens our church and our ability to invite other, others to connect with Jesus Christ and find hope in him. The women of Maple Grove Lutheran Church have a special event coming up Saturday morning, April 17th from nine to noon. It's a spring women's retreat. I want to thank the organizing team for providing a morning that we need badly. To gather safely, it's online, it's a virtual retreat, but in that time to be encouraged and to laugh and find inspiration and to grow together in faith. You know, the pandemic has shown us the true priorities in life. Make this a priority. Take this time and I'll see you there, April 17th. You can register online on our website or through an e-note link. With that, we begin Holden Evening Prayer. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within your people here. Sing our thanks to God. 
It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Creator of the universe. From old you have led your people by night and day. May the light of your Christ make our darkness bright. For your word and your presence are the light of our pathways, and you Come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Well, tonight for our final Lenten speakers, we have the Smart family, Jeff, Shauna, Connor, and Sawyer. And how appropriate, we're going to hear them um, through Zoom, which we've all learned to use this past year. So a great representative experience of the pandemic. Our conversation was pre-recorded um, last Thursday. And so tonight we bring you uh, the perspective of the Smart family and their story from the pandemic. Well, Smart Family, thank you for uh, being our final uh, speakers for our Wednesday Lent series, Stories from the Pandemic. And I wanted to find a family um, that was brave enough <laughs> and willing to just share, you know, some of your experience living through the past year. Uh, we've heard from different people and their perspectives, but we hadn't had a family perspective. so. I appreciate um, this opportunity and your willingness to, to share. And so with that, we decided how appropriate we set up a Zoom call. I think that's perfect, you know. Uh, it was one of the main ways that we all communicated and kept in touch with each other. And certainly through the church this past year, um, we've uh, had all our meetings and Bible studies and all kinds of things on Zoom. So um, I sent you some questions to think a little bit about ahead of time, but 
let's get started with the first one, which is if um, each of you would just take a turn um, telling me what you remember, like with the, I call it the big shutdown, like what, what did you worry would happen, but then what really happened? Uh, did your um, teachers, your parents, go ahead. I, I remember at school, like how kids were talking about like a new virus starting, but I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. And then one day we went home. I don't remember if we went home early or not, but we went home and like the next week I learned that we were staying home and I didn't think it'd be that long, but it's long. It was long. Um, oh, and now when did you guys get to go back in person? So Sawyer so started in the fall pretty quickly, I think. Um, and then Connor, you didn't. I didn't start till like two weeks after that. Was it the yeah. middle of September? Mm -hmm. It was a little bit later. He wasn't home very long before they shut them down again. So oh, Connor that's right. Connor was home for a very long time, and then Sawyer went back sooner. But the thing is that when we went back, we had A group and then B. I was B, and my friend, a lot of my friends were A. Oh, no. That's hard. And then, yeah, Sawyer, you don't get to see all of your friends, A and B, together. Are they together yet? Yeah, now they're together. Well, now oh, together. good. Everybody, five days a week. Oh, really? We definitely had to set a schedule that kind of started with the end of the school year because it wasn't really working out very well for us initially. It was part school stuff, part like gym stuff. Yeah, and, so and we wrote out a schedule of kind of the hours and what they had to do each hour um, just to keep them either moving or their brains working and not just sitting on the sofa playing video games and watching TV. So it was pretty scheduled out. We were pretty regimented even through the summer. And that helped you a lot to have some kind of routine. I'm curious too, I'm, I'm gonna ask your folks a few questions in a minute here, but boys, once again, I'm also curious for all of our youth, it's like, um, how did this affect like um, your friendships and your family? Like, how did you stay in touch with everybody? Or at first, was it pretty lonely? Well, at first we kind of did Zoom meetings so we could still see each other, but then that we went back to school, then we couldn't see each other because yeah. we had to be separate. You have to keep your distance, right? How about you, Connor? I was kind of lonely at the start because I couldn't really go anywhere and I wasn't in school yet. And a lot of my classes, I don't really have any friends from elementary school, so it made it kind of hard, but. I made new friends off of it, so now I got a lot of new friends. Yay, Connor! I mean, uh, yeah, one of my questions is what did you learn about yourself? And I think you answered one of them for us is that you could make new friends. Good for you. Um, okay. Um, and all right, so let me ask uh, Shauna and Jeff, what were you guys worried about with the big shutdown? And, how, what actually unfolded um, through last spring and summer for you work-wise? And mention where you work too, please. Yeah, um, so I work at Adana Realty and the first part of the year, February and January worked out really well. We were going strong, a lot of, a lot of activity, a lot of good business. And then about March, um, it really kind of grinded to a halt. So we had about 30, 30 days in there that was a little bit nerve wracking because you just didn't know for sure if we were able to get back to work, get out there, what was going to happen. So I would say that that 30 days in March was a little bit, I'd say I was a little nervous. I was scared, but nervous. And then after that, it picked up and we were super busy afterwards. So Jeff, your business was one of the businesses that kind of after maybe the, the shock or figuring out you know, what can we do or so forth, you really picked up. Um, yeah, most of the real estate we saw in 2020, was, I mean, it was really a boom. There was just a lot of people looking, low interest rates, people realizing that they needed more space in their homes because they were home now all the time. Um, so for most people in real estate, it was a really good year and everybody was really busy. So for 
me, um, you know, we had about, like I said, 30 days where I was a little nervous. And after that, it, it was just go all the time and, and probably busier than normal. So it was a good year in general for, for me, for work -wise. How about your work, uh, Shauna? Um, I am the director of web development at Prime Advertising. And uh, just the nature of my business is online. And so it was a really uh, seamless transition for us to work from home. Um, the projects I work on are not super dependent on a lot of the things that happened last year. And so we were super busy, at least my department was. Um, so it was good. We were actually overly busy, um, which was a challenge just trying to have them school at home and parents and work full time. I figured, um, so one thing um, that um, we're all reflecting on, I think is, what did this experience help us appreciate more? And I'll start with Jeff and Sean, I'll ask you guys first. Coming out of this, what do you appreciate more? Um, sure, um, I think people's faces I appreciate a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> miss people's faces um i think we found that we we really like to watch movies together uh, we did a lot of that over the summer especially when we didn't have other things to do um before sports started up you know when sports started then we we're slowly getting into a little bit of a routine um, we appreciated good weather so we could go over bike rides and i think we looked past a lot of that in the past um took it for granted um, and I think we just appreciate that these two kind of figured out how to be buddies sometimes. Sometimes. All right. Good job again. <laughs> hey, wait, what's this mean? <laughs> it's the sometimes, right? <laughs> okay, 50%. <laughs> how about you, Jeff? Um, you know, I think I just really appreciate being able to go to work because I know there's a lot of people that were not able to work or were out of work. And, um, you know, I was lucky enough where we could still go into the office. Um, so every day that I was able to go in the office, I felt really, um, it, it, I just, it was just something that you kind of take for granted, right? You, you just go every day and you don't think anything about it. Um, but then when you see everybody else shut down or like Shauna having to be at home all the time, and, and most people that way, even our clients were the same way, um, I just felt very fortunate that we could go in because for me, um, there was a handful of us that were in the office all the time. and. Um, I think you kind of feel like a bond with them. Uh, you just have relationships that I think a lot of people missed out on because they weren't around people. So I was very fortunate in that way that I would still be able to be around people that I know, people that I like, and also for just bouncing ideas off of, or if you're frustrated with something, they could help you through it. And I know a lot of people didn't have that. So I think that was the thing that I, you know, you just, it's a daily thing that you just normally don't think about and when it's taken away, or you see it, you know, the people have been taken away that you just appreciate it more. Mm -hmm. How about Sawyer and Connor? What do you appreciate more now? Wanna go Sawyer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate actually being able to like go into school, even if it is two days a week, and just going to see my teachers, because I think I do a lot better in person than distance. Mm hmm All right, Sawyer, your turn. Mm, I appreciate my, like seeing my friends and seeing all my classmates again, and like my teachers too. Yeah. Um, how has your faith helped you? And I'll throw that to the parents. Um, and then I'll ask the boys for something different. Um, we talk about God sightings, so you guys can think about God sightings. We do that at Vacation Bible School and in Kingdom Kids, you know. Where did you see God? So you think about that, but Jeff and Shauna, um, how did your faith help you through this time? I think, I think I fell back on it more during the early part of the year last year, and it kind of continued all the way through. Um, I, I think what I realized is, I like being in control. I like control um, and, and having a plan, right? So I think when everything kind of hit um, in March and in the spring, especially because that was, I think, when we saw the most uh, change happen from normal life, uh, I, I think I fell back on just prayer in the morning. I know I'd prayer or pray. 
Um, and it was just simple stuff like just get me through the day. And I think that's what I realized too, is just take it more day by day. Um, I wasn't looking at the big picture. I wasn't looking at the end of the week. Um, it was just really 24 hours at a time and just, and just making it simple. And I think that really helped me just to do, you know, something for just like, you know, be with me, help me today, um, guide me. Um, so I, I think that's where I focused a lot more is just quick prayers, you know, to get me through the day or get me somewhere in the middle of the day to get me to the end of the day. Um, I think I, I, I started practicing a lot more prayer than I did before. How about you, Shaw? Um, so of our reflection and um, it's for me a lot of times is outdoors and nature and trying to experience it in that way. I think that, okay, Connor and Sawyer, we're, we're wrapping it up here, but God sighting. So did you think about where you saw God through this past time, this past year? Well, I think I've seen God probably at school because we can just like, like we can go up to each other and talk like without like getting sick or anything. And we, mm, I don't know. Well, oh, that was pretty good, Connor. <laughs> Yeah, that he's, uh, God's watching over us and helping keep us safe and helping us find our way to be together again. Thank you for that. Sawyer, where have you seen God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably outside and like playing with dad and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like balls. I think that's one of the blessings we had. You know, we did some more stuff that we didn't normally do. And, and we tried to get out more just because everybody was so cooped up. And it was just like, whenever you got a nice day, it was just like, let's get out. Um, and, and just, I'll jump in on the question too. Um, I think it was just one of those, I just saw God more with every sunset. Um, you know, bright blue skies made me super happy this last year. Uh, puffy clouds were, you know, something good too. So I think there's just a lot of things like that, that you just, you were so busy before, not that, you know, people aren't still busy, I meant that way, but you were just so busy in normal life that I think this last year or last, you know, 12 months since really, or 14 months since the pandemic hit, um, the views have changed, I think, for a lot of us. And like I said, just the simple thing as a sunset and just, re and just appreciating that where maybe before you didn't have the time to really take a look at it or the bright blue sky is just something that's so much more important today than before. Uh, because it's something that's consistent and it's always there. And it, it was just beauty and a lot of things outside. I think that's where our family really appreciates it. You know, whether it's even just a little bird chirping, just little things like that, that God's given us gifts that are, you know, beautiful and, and kind of take the stress away or put life back to normal. You know, the sun rises every day, the sun sets every day. And I think that's the thing that we didn't see a lot last year was a normal pattern of things. And so there's some things in nature that got created, I think were a good thing to um, give us some normal things that we've been missing out on a lot where the pandemic took it away from us. Wow, that's a great reflection, Jeff. How did church help? I'd like to know uh, how we were helpful as a community of faith and trying to uh, stay connected. I was thinking about this one today. Um, it, it's I kind of, if you have a place where you really like to go, right? Whether it's back home if you've been gone for a long time or um, a special vacation place, you, you get excited when you when you get close, right? And I think that's how it was for me when I walked in the doors of the church because it was taken away. Um, so when I did get the opportunities to come in, when it was you know available, we had it, we didn't have it, and then it was back on again. And I talked to you a lot of times about like, hey, can we get the doors open? Can we come back? Um, yes. So when we do when we do come back, I get excited when I hit the door and I get in, and I think that's something that's um, nice because I always enjoy coming to church before, but when you don't have that opportunity, um, I think you just appreciate that much more. So when you walk in, um, it was kind of like a piece of a puzzle that was taken away, and you couldn't complete that puzzle um, until the doors opened back up, and then we were able to come back in and worship and just see you know the smiling face. Well, maybe you don't see the smiling face because everybody's mask on, but you just see the people again. Um, there's just a lot of things about being able to be back in church and being able to worship and see people that I think uh, was super important to get 
kind of back to normal again. Do you have a Bible verse? We usually ask the um, our Lenten speakers if they have a Bible verse that's been special to them that you you would like to share with all of us. We found a few. We found three, but we kind of narrowed it down to one, and it's not very long. But I think it kind of reflects during the time period that um, you know when the world changed, if you want to say, from normal to the new norm. Um, I think it was something that we kind of thought about, and it's Joshua 1 9. And it says, Be strong, be courageous, do not be frightened, and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen to that, Jeff, Shauna, Connor, and Sawyer. It's been great to connect with you, and thank you very much for this visit. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary. Said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall bear a child, and his name shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am. Servant of my God, I live to do your will. My soul proclaims your greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here.
rejoices in you. You have looked with love on your servant here and blessed me all my life through. God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and thanks to you. May God Creator bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever right for our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and path for all. Remember the poor. 
Thanks be to God. We'll see you Palm Sunday.